Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai. I'm a board certified dermatologist here in Seattle. And this is a very highly requested topic that I'll be talking about today. It's keratosis pilaris or KP. KP, it's so, so common. A lot of people have been asking about doing a video on this. My patients in clinic will frequently come in asking, what are these bumps on the back of my arms, on my thighs, on my buttocks? So we'll get into that today. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm a board certified dermatologist. I trained at Harvard Medical School's Mass General Hospital, Brigham and Women's, and Beth Israel Deaconess, as well as Boston Children's Hospital. From residency to my practice, I do medical, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology. We are commonly seeing keratosis pilaris in clinic, and it's not a dangerous condition. It's benign, but it's quite troublesome. It's chronic, and we can outgrow it, but it can stick with us for most of our lives. Now, what is keratosis pilaris or KP? KP is the condition where we have these keratin plugs. Keratin's a protein that you see in your skin, hair, and nails. And when you have these little plugs of kind of like this dead skin plugs in your follicles, you have these bumps or people call goose flesh, strawberry skin, goose bumps. We see this a lot in Asians, but also see this in Caucasians as well. The most common areas would be the back of the arms. I have it as well. And I noticed it more when I moved from Hawaii to the mainland. We'll get into that soon. But you can see on the back of your arms, the front of your thighs and your bottom or your buttocks. You can also see it on your upper back area. So from the back of your arms extend to the upper back, see that a lot in men. And then for kids, we'll even see it on the cheeks and it can be quite red. It'd be KP rubra, keratosis pilaris rubra on the cheeks can be quite bumpy, but also red and irritating to my pediatric patients. And then we can talk about retinoids for those certain patients, but it's not for everyone, but we'll talk about how to safely use retinoids in clinic for your child if he or she has the red KP on the cheeks. And I usually see that in young boys more so than girls. Now for us adults, we can use quite a bit of over-the-counter things to help break up those little plugs and smoothen out the skin, but it's very, very hard to get rid of it. If I were to invent a way to remove KP from you permanently at any point of your life, I would never have to work again. KP, you see it a lot in young females and males. For myself in Hawaii, where it's very humid and warm, my skin wasn't ever needing moisturizer. I didn't know what moisturizer was really growing up in Hawaii. So when I moved to Boston for residency, that's when my skin really dried out and I really needed that moisturizer. I needed that Aquaphor or Vaseline for my lips. Hands can get cracked and dry during the winter, but my KP really started to show up then and it was very bumpy, It'd get red. I would actually habitually pick at it sometimes and that can lead to scarring. So big no-no for KP is do not pick at your KP. Evolutionary wise, we're trained back when we were Neanderthals say, we were trained to pick at anything raised or itchy on our skin and scratch at it. And so for us, if we have any roughness on the back of our arms, of course we're gonna try and pick it off evolutionary wise because we back in the day we'd have to pick off anything that was trying to bite us, harm us. Instead of picking, we should be focusing on moisturizer. You see keratosis pilaris quite a bit in those with eczema. Eczema, as you guys know, is dry itchy skin from a compromised skin barrier where you have micro cracks in the skin that can become large cracks or visible fissures that we look at our hands are visibly fissured and cut. That's eczema or atopic dermatitis. That is very commonly associated with KP. So KP, I believe there is a dry skin component to it, especially since I saw it personally in myself moving from a humid, warm area of Hawaii to Boston and now living in Seattle, I still deal with it and hopefully I do outgrow it. But it is quite bothersome. You do feel self-conscious of it. You're not alone. If you know, when I wear shorts, you can also see the bumps on the tops of my thighs, the front of my thighs. That's all keratosis pilaris, but not dangerous, just stubborn. And so I've tried retinoids. I've tried prescription retinoids like tazeratine, very strong and even irritates my face. But when I bring it down to thicker skin on my body, it's also irritated my skin and also caused hyperpigmentation or PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And unfortunately, it did leave some brown spots that took months, several months to fade. For us, skin of color, that's a huge problem. Whenever you have an acne lesion, a rash, irritation, you can get a dark stain for months. And so it took a while for my skin to recover from that. So it's all about finding balance. Some people might find benefits with using a strong retinoid like tazeratine on their skin. For myself, not so much. And so what do we do? Let's go over moisturizers. Moisturizers are very important when it comes to the foundation of treatment your keratosis pilaris and then we can get into like exfoliants. I like things with urea. Urea is a humectant that draws in water, really softens your skin and it's a keratolytic so it really does break up those keratin plugs. Eucerin is a classic example of a moisturizer with urea. This is the roughness relief cream. I like this one a lot. It's a thicker texture, almost like melted butter from the stick that you left out and it's starting to melt. It has that texture but I like this one a lot for the body. It's very affordable.
affordable 45 gram tub of goodness here. So urea in the roughness relief line is on the higher side. I believe it's like five to 10% of urea or maybe even 15%. I'll have to look that up. This is one of the, the best over-the-counter things you can get. There are 40% urea options on Amazon, but they do leave more of a sticky residue, my patients tell me. And so this one just blends in very quickly. Other thing that I have found a lot of relief with would be Gold Bond Ultimate, the rough and bumpy skin. This is great for keratosis pilaris. This has different acids in it. It's AHA, it has PHAs. And so this one's a really nice texture, even thinner than the urea, nice and cool. And that just goes on very nice. It's gentle, but it also softens the skin. Get it on the elbow, probably really soften up your elbows and knees. This one has BHA as well. I think it's a winner. I don't talk about Gold Bond a lot, but for sure, thumbs up to this affordable moisturizer here. Now going on to Lubriderm, this one's also nice. This one has the glycerin, which is in a lot of moisturizers. That's a humectant that draws in water. You got petrolatum, which you see in like Aquaphor. So it does have a thicker texture to it. This also has vitamin E, pro vitamin B5, or pathanol, which is hydrating as well as moisturizing, like an emollient, has lipids, and also has shea butter. So also a very gentle option. This is probably my favorite moisturizer out of the Lubriderm lines. We're talking about jars here, right? Not so much pumps because the pumps usually have lotions and lotions are lighter weight and these creams that are thicker are in a jar. People who don't like jars because they think it's gross, go with the lotion, but the lotion is lighter weight. So this is a nice one as well, but it does not have the urea, it doesn't have the acids like these other ones here. It doesn't have the acids like the Gold Bond or the keratolytic action of Eucerin. And so if you wanna avoid those things, you could consider Lubriderm's fragrance-free advanced therapy. Now I have one that's in a pump if you rather have a pump. This one is 20% urea by Cetaphil. So this is really upping up. I'm pretty sure Eucerin roughness relief doesn't have 20%. So this is a higher concentration of urea here. So out of a pump, if you prefer pump, especially guys, my patients who are guys prefer pump, this is very lightweight. See that that texture is just completely different, but you're gonna get that 20% urea action. So it's kind of a best of both worlds. If you want something lighter weight in the summer and still work on your, your feet that are dry and cracked and you're self-conscious wearing those flip-flops or in Hawaii we say slippers. If you want to up your summer game and really work on your dry cracked heels and you want something lightweight, this is for you a lightweight daily smoothing moisturizer by Cetaphil with 20% urea. After the shower is the best time to apply these when your skin's mildly damp so you can lock in that moisture from your shower and that is the best time to apply. If you can do this all the time, you really will work on your keratosis pilaris. Now, if you wanna do something every once in a while, like just one to three times a week to exfoliate without picking, right? I like chemical exfoliants and physically scrubbing or scratching away your KP. There are different options. Now, I've used KP Duty. This one is a nice exfoliant scrub here and you just put a small amount in the shower onto dry skin and just gently, gently, very gently with your fingertips, rub it over the affected area and it does get messy. These little micro beads will get all over the place, but you're getting 10% AHAs plus PHAs in this Derma Doctor KP Duty. I do this in the shower because it makes a mess and then rinse it off. Your skin does feel nice and smooth, but don't do this all the time. I would say one to three times a week at most. Other things you could consider would be a glycolic acid body scrub. This is by Dr. Sandra Lee or Dr. Pimple Popper. Her line is nice. This is a nice scrub with 10% glycolic glycolic acid. In clinic, I will use 30% glycolic acid. And so this is just a nice miniature form of that that you can do safely at home. Body lotion wise, I put this on last night, 10% glycolic acid with shea butter to help moisturize. But this is also a very nice texture here by Sandra Lee. And this look, that just came out really nice. Has a nice little pleasant smell to it. Grubs on very well. So I put that on my back of my arms last night and today woke up with some smooth arms. So I'm liking that. Oh, I got a scratch there doing some yard work. But anyways, great options there if you want to use something exfoliating and leave on or a wash off, but don't do that all the time. Now let's talk about retinoids. So retinoids, we talked about prescription retinoids. Those can be quite irritating. If you want something less irritating, I would recommend something like Versed Retinol Body Lotion. This is great because we don't see a lot of retinoids retinols that are for the body. You know, retinols, a lot of times we're talking about it for the face, but you don't want to neglect, say, your chest. You could actually consider putting retinol on the back of your arms. For my patients with actinic 
purpura, or I don't you like to use this term, but there is a term called senile purpura. As we get older, our skin tends to thin out and bruise very easily. If you're on blood thinners like Eliquis, or if you're taking aspirin, even a baby aspirin, you will bruise very easily on the back of your arms. Even just like leaning up on a shopping cart can cause a big old bruise that will stay there for weeks. And so how do we strengthen it besides sunscreen? The collagen is breaking up from the sun. We want to protect it from sunscreen, but we can also consider retinoids. And you don't want to spend like $100 or $150 on a prescription retinoid and apply it to the back of your hands because that's super expensive for all of us. You know, Verse made a nice one. There's Dermin anti-bruising formula that I recommend to my patients, but Verse came out with one that took a little bit to be available at Target, but now I saw it at my Target the other day. So check this one out. You can use this for chest, your neck, back of your hands, your arms. You don't like crepey skin on say your knees and such, you could use a retinol. This would be, I'd say, a nice option for those with keratosis pilaris. So I'm gonna show you how this looks here. This will be a nice gentle way to go about your keratosis pilaris that might be hyperpigmented from scratching or a little red. Retinoids do help with red KP in my experience. It's all about tolerability. So I will prescribe stronger ones for people who are really bothered by it and they want faster results. But if you wanna work on it slowly, do a over-the-counter strength, low potency retinol. And over time that may help. I even tried doing like pulse eye lasers on red keratosis pilaris and it didn't really work very well. It's very inconsistent results. I've even tried doing it on myself and I didn't see any relief with um, a V-beam or pulse dye laser that targets vascularity, redness. So I'd say that it's all about the skincare game and that's why I feel like this video is very personal to me because I have it and also just very important because it's information that you could use at home without going into the dermatologist but this is not medical advice for you. You always want to go to your dermatologist to talk about personalized skincare, personalized prescriptions for you. This is just general knowledge stuff, but it could be helpful. So just real quick recap, moisturizer is king when it comes to keratosis pilaris treatment. And then you can consider other things like scrubs very infrequently, not on a daily basis. And then also considering a retinol. If you're not pregnant, you can consider a retinol for the body. Okay. So hopefully you guys like this video. Please hit the like button. Please share with your friends with keratosis pilaris and please subscribe to the channel, guys. I appreciate you all. Thank you for the support and thank you to Seattle Met Magazine for another year of top doctor recognition 2022 and I will see you guys for the next video. Take care and peace.